So we were supposed to start recording this probably about an hour or so ago, but uh, why I got on the topic of wrestling, which I've never seen him do this. Uh, like I've yeah, never seen I'm, him start. I'm not a wrestler. He, I'm not a fan of wrestling. He never starts a conversation off with wrestling. He'll either start it off with racing, or like, hey, do you want to get you guys want to get together for a game of Among Us, or, or some of that. Among Us, or try to get a game started. But he he got on this topic for way longer than what I thought he would. So <laughs> I was like, you know what? Screw it. I showed him last night's main event at Hell in a Cell between Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. He got invested oh. in this one. Uh, by the way, just to add on to that, uh, whenever this video will be released, it was month. It was the uh, sun was the Sunday match. Yeah, this is yeah that was. It is because we are pre-recording this on Monday, so that that yesterday. Yeah. I believe no confusion. Yes. Yes. But he he actually was kind of enjoying this a little bit more than what I thought he would. He also thought the the names of the finishers were stupid. <laughs> they're, so, they're so corny, and I've and I've heard like other ones in them, and I've like uh, I know some wrestler names and for here lately i've been kind of uh seen some videos wrestling i don't know why it just pops up just like something to watch i mean hey uh, they're they're good clips to watch i mean especially way back in the 90s early 2000s hey those are some pretty badass clips but we're not talking wrestling this is not a wrestling podcast nope. this is not gamers talk wrestling Wait. this is gamers talk nascar and i am host elijah leonard alongside co-host wyatt walker and uh we're going to be talking about Gateway in Portland. Uh, honestly, this probably was a high one of the highest one of one of the weekends that was pretty highly anticipated because this is not only that was not only um, because of Xfinity going to Portland, which was the first time that any of the top three series had been there since the year 2000, and but also the highly anticipated debut. At Gateway for the Cup Series. Cup. Let's talk about it. I don't think we have anything else to really kind of put that put out there on the table except for our thoughts on this race. So let, let's go ahead and spill them. I'm gonna start off with let's let's start off. How about this? Let's go ahead and start off with the Truck Series because that you race. Read my mind. That you race was. Read my mind. That race I I feel like was really solid. That was a really good race. Really, really oh, solid. Really... Let me pull. Let me go ahead and pull up the uh, results of that one real quick. Yeah, the racing was really, racing was really good. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to watch it because I had issues, but I was able to get back going. And uh, Johnny Sauter, another was back this week, and he got got top five again. Yeah, for Johnny Sauter. And once again, we're back to uh, the winner was Corey Heim. Winner was Corey Heim. And once again, we're back to teammate versus teammate. It's Corey oh, Heim. Got in, got in Chandler Smith another time. <laughs> and another, another day, he gets upset with him. Chandler so had himself a day. He had a day. But let's just say podium finish, third place. I'd say, I mean, it's not a win, of course, it's not a win. but it's a good payoff. Top five, you got to be impressed with that. And you got to give another tough break to Christian Eckes. Another, a third week in a row, I think, is what they said, that he has uh, been up front leading, could have won the win, couldn't win the race, and a caution comes out. Yeah. Screws him. I felt bad. I I, I kind of felt bad, but I but at the same time, I who who did it come down to before that caution came out? Eckes and uh, Chandler Smith. I think I think someone that Corey or, Heim was just coming up. To, I think maybe Corey. I don't know. It was one other guy who fell back. No, it was that. No, I remember. Derek Kraus. 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 Dude, Krause. I wanted that thing to run green the rest of the way because I was thinking, oh, well, actually, no, I actually didn't want it to run green the rest of the way because. Uh, I mean, of course that that it did screw Eckes over a little bit. Still, a second place finish. Got to be proud of that. But I wanted to see what Derek Kraus had for for um, for Christian Eckes on that yellow. Krause? But Kraus is not one. 
No, he hasn't. And I was really pulling for him. So I th- so when he took the uh, outside and lined up in the second row, I was like, no, oh, this will be interesting. Didn't work out for him, but he still got a seventh place finish, which I'd say once again, it's solid. I mean, you can't you can't go wrong with this with a top ten finish. So, and I want to give a huge shout, couple shout outs to a couple of names here. One, the first one I have to say, actually, I, I actually had to give this guy first because I chose him as a stay away last week. Matt Benedetto got six. Yeah, actually surprised me on that one, and that, and I just. And he showed me up. I I called it. I was like, he probably will show me up. I hope he does. And he did. Sixth place, not bad. Uh, Chase Purdy, probably getting his best finish. I can remember. Tenth place. I think that's his best finish this year for Hattori Racing Enterprises. Tyler Ancrum, not too far behind him, 13th. I mean, hey, Hattori Racing Enterprises, once again, I got to use this word again. They had themselves a pretty solid day. And you talk about solid day. How about a solid first start for Roger Caruth in the seven car for Spire Motorsports? He, that was a really good. That was a Dude. really good first start. I was impressed that he almost got a top ten. Listen, first start. When I first heard that Caruth was going to be driving the seven truck, I was so damn happy. I was pr- I was so happy and I was so excited to see him race. I mean, hey, he what? Well, where did he start? He started nineteenth, right? He started nineteenth. He the, he was pretty much mid pack throughout the, what the the opening parts of the race. Had some pit strategy that put him up at the front. He ran up at the front for a yeah, good started. portion of the race. He did have he had a couple slip ups, spun out, uh, trying to avoid an accident. He got I caught. Thought he wrecked, that's, that's I thought he I thought he got wrecked. I thought he was gonna wreck too, but he got nabbed for speeding later on, so that was a setback for him. But he well, he, he knew, kept, so but he, he kept, that. but he kept, he kept a calm head. He was calm, cool, and collected. He didn't blow up over the radio. He stayed in this thing. Eleventh place finish. This guy again. I gotta bring it up. Re- remember, Wyatt. This man came from our branch of the NR two thousand three community. He's the first ever. Uh, uh, what was then the NRLOA Chick Fil A Cup Series champion back in two thousand fifteen, and this man has a full time ARCA ride. He ran. Uh, he's uh, he's running a limited schedule, and I think in trucks he might make a few more starts later this year, and I think he might make a few more starts in the Xfinity series for Alpha Prime later this year. I don't know what the plans for him are going to be for the rest of this year, but one thing well, is for I certain: Caruth, get- Raja Caruth, is truly a solid driver, and I believe. He he's he's probably gonna close out this year at some point with a win. Yeah. Mark my words, it's gonna happen. Agreed. Uh, I think Rock and maybe in, isn't he leading? Isn't he still leading the Arca Point Arca standings? I haven't even looked at the no, Arca no, no, standings. No, 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 that's Nick Sanchez. That's Nick Sanchez, different guy. No, <laughs> I forget who's leading the Arca Point, but he's up there. It's probably he's at. It's probably Corey Heim. No, Corey Heim. Well, I don't know about Corey Heim. It's not Corey Heim. I know that. Hold on, let me look. I'm going to look with you. All right, series. Standings. Um, yeah, I'm actually looking too. Um, Yes. Raja Karuth is leading the points. So he's the current points leader. I, he has not won a race yet, but he... Oh, he did win. He did win that race. No, he didn't. Who won that last race? It was uh, the last Arca race. He definitely tied. If this... If this wait. The, it pulled up racing right. reference points for me. Pulled up racing reference? Yeah. I'm trying to look see if this is like the the uh, current points right now because it looked like him and Heim were tied. But... 
Here's how it looks uh, for me. So. Oh, okay, so I think I found it. Maybe. Uh, it shows that Nick Sanchez and Rada Cruz are tied with 155 points. I'm here's, not sure if I'm caught. Here's what it looks like for me. I don't know if it's already been updated or not, but here's how it looks for me. So Carruth has a 247 has 247 points in the bag. He's got a five point gap over Nick Sanchez. Then it's Daniel Dye third, Tony Bredinger. I for, literally forgot how to pronounce her last name. She's in fourth. Amber Bar Amber Baclain is oh, in fifth. Greg Van Alst is in sixth. Zachary Tinkle seventh. Corey Heim eighth. Brad Smith ninth. Thank Ryan you. Huff top ten. Parker Chase. Justine, Drew Dollar. Yeah, I think I found it. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I found it. But yeah, he's still currently the points leader by five over Nick Sanchez and seven by Daniel Dye, who we talked about earlier. But Daniel Dye, he almost lost his pride. <laughs> but he got it back uh, quicker than... Um... Quicker than some of these other some uh, some other guys, <laughs> uh, but still, hey, uh, Roger Carruth first Truck Series start, eleventh place finish, almost almost the top, almost the top uh, ten. Really good, really good day. Uh, extremely good day. Haley Deegan got top fifteen. Something she's been needing. She about she about ran up front a little bit. She, oh, she did. She was actually racing. Like, Deegan was up there racing inside of the top five. She actually, I think, I think she even got some stage points at stage two. She needed a good run, and this was a really good run for Really for solid. Her. It's, it's solid. Like. But, con but congrats to Corey Heim getting his second, second career truck series win. And he is definitely the guy that's going to win the rookie of the year. I'm calling he's in the rookie of the year. He's not full time. He's beating full time drivers that are in the rookie of the year contention. That he's which, a part, which he's is part time. Nice. And he's beating Dean Thompson, Lawless Allen, Blaine Perkins, and Jack Wood for rookie of the year. And he's the only part time guy currently with two wins. I'll say, I'll say this this win that he got at, uh, at Gateway back on Saturday, that one I think was earned. Personally, that one was earned. The one in Atlanta to me was a Mickey Mouse win. This win right here, <laughs> this one was earned. But yeah, so I'm just gonna list off. That's, I think we list off enough that they uh, line up and go and list off the points. Corzane Smith three. Is the only one with three wins. They got Nemechek, Rhodes, Friesen, and Chandler Smith, all with one win. Yeah. Eckes is up by 114 points. Majeski, 88. Kosovar, 70. Crafton, 50. And Grant Empinger, who had a bad race, it's 44 below. <laughs> Not below. 44 above. I feel bad for Greg, Greg and Finger. Grant and Finger. Right. <laughs> His name is Greg now. Um, but, 44 below, Kraus, 48, Gray. Matt Badetto is still 59 points below the cutoff. Yeah. And then Ankrum, 78. Man. Only got four more races left for, for the uh, the chase starts for, for trucks. Is so. It, is it really four more races left? Four more. It's amazing of how of how of how quick the truck series season, regular season is uh, goes by, you know. I might just gonna pull up the uh, truck points on NASCAR real quick. See like who's all who all looks like they're in a must win now, and uh, who all could still try to maybe point the way in. They have some good runs. Enfinger, if he can pull himself together these next four races, he could point his way in. I think Derek Krause could do it. Tanner Gray's a little bit slim. Matt DiBenedetto, if he can, if he can do, if he can replicate what he did the last four weeks, 
he could do it. As I far mean, as Ankrum on down, I have no faith in. I'm sorry. I have no yeah. faith in them. Yeah, he's about to get, yeah, he's only like uh from from Ankrum to Purdy, well, he still has a good amount of gaps. It's a thirty thirty dollars. So just looking at the points currently. Below Ankrum, Purdy is down by a hundred and eighteen. Wait, why is that wait? These points are a bit off. Hold on. Why are these points different than the other ones? Purdy is yeah, Purdy actually is down by a hundred and eighteen. He's in sixteenth spot. Yeah, but the points on here are way different than when I Well what got. well what are you looking at? The NAS I'm the NASCAR truck series points. It looks like they're all so is Eck is up by seventy. Majeski forty four. Oh, oh, is that from that's just what is this? Oh, because the, it's it's how many I, I don't even know what hang on yeah that's showing how many points there are above the cut line so yeah it's show, yeah it's showing my end Ek is up set by 70 Carson's up by 26 what okay this part's wrong um Majeski should be above Hosevar <laughs> but I think it's a tiebreaker and not to mention that Ed Finger it shows he's below six. He's below by Which, six. Well, that's weird, but hey, I mean, nonetheless. So I think that's an issue. I think that's an issue on NASCAR's part, so I don't know what's up with that. But you got Purdy down that far. Hill, 127. Corey Heim is literally 18th in the actual point standings. Yeah. And it shows he's... Oh, no wonder. It shows he's six. Putting him in the playoffs. <laughs> he's not running the playoffs, and yet it shows him six in the playoff standings. That makes a lot of sense now. Oh, thanks, NASCAR. So, NAS so okay, NASCAR, you just want to do screw that up? That that make, That's what's complicated. Because if you look down on the... Uh, what's... Project playoff, you see the you see a number six by his name. What's funny? Okay, here's something that I think is really funny. So, if you look at regular season points, uh, you've got Ryan Priest, who's made a combined a whopping five starts this year. Uh, and he is 18 points above Corey Heim, who has six starts, but has two wins to his credit. And you mentioned Parker Klingerman. He's not the, he's not far back from that either. He's also made five starts. <laughs> and he's not but far they're beat. both. Haley Deegan, Haley Deegan's uh, 266 points from the league. She's not even shown to be part of the top 20. I feel bad. I honestly do. I feel super bad. But, you know, D Haley's as long as she, if she could pick up her performance in these next four races, which fingers crossed, I'm really hoping she can. I know she can do it. Then mark my words, she'll probably get up there. But I don't think at, at this point I don't think it's going to be enough to to get herself into the chase. Like I I just don't see a way. She needs a win and get up in the top 20 points for her to even be playoff eligible. Yeah. Because right now, only Colby Howard is playoff eligible, eligible right now. <sighs> Colby Howard's holding on. Colby Howard, and man. Shown, and he's shown to be 20th. <sighs> Anyways, after we get done... Now that we got a truck series all taken care of. Oh, boy. Portland. <laughs> See, I watched this thing, and I couldn't help but feel so incredibly bad for H.J. Allmendinger. He went off the gr he went off into the grass, never even took the green. He went straight off into the grass. 
by the time they got to turns four and five, he was off the track again into the grass. Uh, he even went down a lap. There were a lot of caution. There was there was how many cautions were there in this race? I don't I even. I, I I honestly don't know either. Um, but <laughs> I forgot how many cautions there were. I think there was like ten cautions throughout the whole thing, and a lot of them just had to do with drivers just you know going for every spot that they can get. I mean you. At the at the end of this whole deal, though, Almondinger had arguably probably one of the best comebacks you'll ever see on a road course. Powers his way to the front, gets by and Myatt wait. Snyder to go on to win. I think he only let six laps throughout that entire thing. Yeah, it shows it right there. Sixteen laps. That was. I was not. I will be honest. I'm not sure how much of a fan I was that race. Just like I, I think it was just the rain. The rained out races don't make it as memorable as you want it to be. Here's my thing with rain races. Um, rain races can be entertaining. Like they can be entertaining as long as to me, if if it's not like s severely downpouring or. Uh, like kind of like what it was with the Charlotte Roval a couple years ago. You remember that? Oh, that, was, oh, that was that was Charlotte. that was like Charlotte Roval. I think was a bit was entertaining. It, it, it it's was see Charlotte Roval is entertaining, but when you add the element of just a constant downpouring rain, which looked like a hundred percent chance of rain, you throw that into the mix. It was wild, but at the same time, you're just thinking to yourself. How the hell are these guys allowed to go out there and race on on a row course that's within a mile and a half racetrack with downpouring rain and a potential threat of thunder and lightning on the horizon? You remember who who surprised us all by by leading and actually got a couple stages? Oh gosh, um, Ty Dillon. That's right. Ty Dillon was like. It was the ace in the rain races, so that's like something. Yeah. But then, but then you mention one, you mention that, and then you go to Coda. Oh yes, Coda, the first rain race of Coda. Hopefully, the only rain race of Coda. Um, that was so stupid. That was fun. I can already think back to that race right now as we speak. Definitely gives so you a lot of really nice flashbacks now, doesn't it? <laughs> it, is, it is makes me so glad that the uh, that this year's Dakota was a whole lot better success. Oh, way better. Um, uh, but but this this but the rain race of Portland. I mean, my thing is is that as long is that the rain racing to me can be pretty entertaining. But probably not to the level of drivers like completely losing it off the corners, uh, complete uh, drivers losing control of their cars as soon as they get onto the painted curbs, as soon as drivers like you know it just it's it's a lot of elements in here that to me I f feel like rain racing can be better, but we're starting to see, I mean well not really starting to see but but. When NASCAR got back to Portland and it was raining, of course, it's been the first time that a, a vast majority of those drivers were on that type of racetrack for Almondingers the first time in 16 years, I think. But and which is which is actually kind of special for him, but we'll get to oh, that in a minute. Oh, it was super special, but like on the flip side of that, I thought if you if you look past, I think if to me if you look past a lot of the the probably the unpreferred chaos uh from rain racing at portland it wasn't bad the opening part of the race was kind of just like what the hell but but once it once the once it st the track started drying up that's where i thought okay this is picking business is picking up now it's starting to get a little bit more entertaining so and then you throw in you throw in this Smaller teams come in into play. J.J. Yaley, Alex LeBay, 
uh, Jade Buford of all people coming in there. Man. Yeah, and mixing things up. Myatt Snyder almost got his first first win in over a year. And that or would have been Jordan Anderson. Yes, that was a, that's another thing. That could have been Jordan Anderson's first ever win as an owner. That that would have been something I special. I know he's got a couple of second place finishes at Daytona. Yeah, those those were really tough to watch. <laughs> but still, here's something else I want to talk about: Ty Gibbs and Jesse Wuji. I was see I was applauding that but here's here, here's my reaction to that little tidbit where uh Alan Alexander Al, Alexander McMurray and uh, Trevor Bain were all reacting to the replay and they saw oh, the like, cool, cool lineup Yeah, that was a good that was actually a pretty solid lineup I got to say but it was a good flow but when the, when the clip played of Jesse Wuji getting into Ty Gibbs, they're like, "Oh, oh my goodness, oh, oh my gosh, what was he thinking?" I bet you, if it was the other way around, they're like, "Oh, well, Ty Gibbs got into Jesse Wuji." Okay, <laughs> I would bet you they would have done that. It was like, what if Jesse Wuji was leading the race and Ty Gibbs just decided to turn him? In the chicane for absolutely no reason. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was about. It's like I guess uh, what they said is like he missed. He missed the corn. Not missed the corn. He just couldn't get on the brakes fast enough. Or something. I don't know what's up with that. I I don't know, but still, nonetheless, that it, it cracked me. Mean, it cracked me up that everybody was blowing up over that. <laughs> We mentioned that, but then uh, we got the other incident about uh, Creed giving Buford the bird. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that was interesting. I I've, I actually kind of missed what caused Creed to give him the bird. I think did Jade Buford get into him and turn him into a wall or something or. Because something had to have happened to him. He did. But still nonetheless. Oh, here's one more thing I want to bring up about the Xfinity race before we get to Cup. How about those three-minute breaks? It's, <laughs> you know, it, it was funny to me of how I was like, I wonder how this is going to work. As soon as... As the 91 pulled into his stall, it's like one of the officials like took out like those like one of those guns that you see at like a track meet, fire it off in the air, and all the pit crews go to work on the cars. It's just all synchronized, change the tires, make the adjustments, clean the windshield yeah. inside and out. It reminds me so much of like those lawnmower races where you got the mowers <laughs> on one side, the drivers on the other, and the drivers have to run to their mowers as quickly as they can. Can, get all situated and then get away and get off get off onto the track to, and go racing that that's what it reminded me of uh, I, so let's uh let's run through the uh top 10 this is the top 10 of this we got just aj omeninger with the win as we mentioned mike snyder comes home second uh austin hill another a good road course finish for the 21 uh, Josh Berry, another good finish for Junior Motorsports. That's Justin Allgaier to back that up with a fifth place. Daniel Herrick needed a good run. He got sixth. Uh, Ty Gibbs, your best friend, got seventh. Ju you mentioned him, just J.J. Yaley, eighth place. Yeah, absolutely. Noah Gregson gained the same position as his car number, nine. And then Alex LeBay, top ten. Man. I mean, for for what it was, I'd say it was pretty good. Of course, the opening, uh, like I said, again, the opening to the race was like, what the heck? Or in this case, with the TikTok sound that I've absolutely fallen in love with, what the Jesus Christ was that? <laughs> I don't think I've heard that one, to be honest with you. Uh, that, that one, was, that's, that's a pretty funny sound. I Here's here's something else that, that I kind of have a knack for. Um... 
just just out of just out of context from uh, kind of in context but out of context too for whatever reason i've kind of fallen in love with like the one thing that is just kind of at the back of my mind is just like some of those unsponsored cars like completely naked of sponsorship patrick emerling's car is just like yes i know no decals on the thing no paint scheme on the thing but you gotta admit just like to see a car like that get a top 20 for what it is it's not bad not bad uh point points we still got gibbs with three Almendinger is now second in the playoff standings with two wins, along with Noah Gregson and Josh Berry. Then got all guy Jones and Hill with a win. Sam Mayer is 137 above the cutoff. Emmerich is 102. Landon Castle, 79. Riley Herbst fell back, and now he's 77. Ryan Sieg is 58 above. Man. Now, here's some, and here's what's funny. Anthony Alfredo is 58 below. Jeb Burton is 67 below. Brett Moffitt is 71 below. And Brandy Brown is 72 below. Do those first three names ring a bell? Yeah. All the R Motorsports cars have a legitimate shot of pointing their way in. Whether with all three, if they get lucky with this, all three... Or either that, or two of their cars, or one of their cars. <laughs> but think about this: all three of the our our motorsports cars are one, two, three below the cutoff. Not one is made above the cutoff yet. We've yet to see it. But man, though, it's just <clears throat> they've been performing really solid this year, and it showed like. It's it's been showing all season long, and including the pole win for Anthony Alfredo uh, back on Saturday or re- really Friday. But still, man, a pole win for Anthony Alfredo on a road course, I'd say that's a win. And now we go to the topic I don't really want to mention. Ah, uh, yes. The first ever cup race at Gateway. A race that has been highly anticipated for the last 21 years. Oh boy. It was good, it was good until the finish. It Hey. I thought the finish was actually pretty good. It was the good. race. The racing itself. Okay. When I tuned in. Here's here's my reaction to when I first heard that Michael McDowell of all people was leading. I'm like, <laughs> Michael McDowell's leading. Must have been some pitch strategy, right? Restart happens. First thing, uh, one of the first things I see on the restart, Ross Chastain not only gets moved over by Chase Elliott, he gets punted in the driver's side door by Denny Hamlin. All on the same restart, same first set of corners. I'm like, what happened? What did he do? So, so I don't know. Did you hear? Did you end up figuring out what happened? I saw the a video go up of uh, titled "Ross Chastain punts Denny Hamlin into the wall." Um, I didn't see what happened with Elliot though. So apparently, so this is what happened. So this is what happened. So I watched. I watched the race and. Uh, I went to commercial break and it saw Ross Chastain was a little too aggressive. Got into Hamlin. Uh, Larry Mack even said the break he was breaking on him went the brakes, but he couldn't slow out down enough and got into Hamlin, messed up his toe link, some ruined his day, so he wasn't able to win. So Hamlin was mad that he started messing with Ross Chastain. I, I saw oh. that. I'm like, oh shoot, this is um. <laughs> This is this is what you'd see on a short track, just like the slower guy holding up the faster dude, and I think Hamlin was trying to take advantage of the like the three lap rule of like oh you got to meet minimum speed if you can't do it within three well, that, laps you're done. Well, that was that was another that was another deal. We'll get to that in a minute because that's going to be even more entertaining. 
But what, going to this part right here, after the next three star, Hamlin's way off the pace, somehow making minimum speed. And then you just see him, it's like a Hamlin versus Ross Chastain deal, trying to push him all the way down, trying to get him. <sighs> but, and, I get you know that right. Hamlin was messing with Ross Chastain, and I don't, I don't blame Hamlin. He, I, I mean, Ross Chastain wants him. I don't, I don't either, but. I mean, when it comes when it comes to that kind of like retaliation, there's a fine line. There's a really I fine think. line. It took a while for NASCAR to step in and say, "Denny, you gotta settle down." I'm like Denny, settle down. You, you wreck made your point. Yeah, you made your point. You you don't need to you don't need to keep going with this. Uh, I don't think I don't I don't believe they said if you wreck them, you're you're gonna get parked. But if if I, he if he did know, that. But- I mean, he they they probably wouldn't even have to say it if if Hamlin did it, they probably would just park him, like. Yeah, and I'm surprised they all. I'm surprised they didn't park him because like he messed with them. He slowed him up so much. Like we'll get to the three lap deal in a minute, but it's like uh. Yeah. Even NASCAR came up on the radio and said, "To the the tower said you made your point, man," and he's laughing at them. It's like, uh, nope. I'm like yeah. In the radio. It's like, oh no, I'm surprised. I I wonder if NASCAR's going to catch that and uh, do something because he made. I get one or twice, I get it, but he's made it point and he did it overdid it. And the part we're going to get to, that proved it. Like he's overdoing. He way overdid it. Yeah, that's taking it a little far, in my opinion. Now we get to the Elliott deal, and this was not Ross Chastain's fault. So it's going to a restart. I forgot what the caution was. We're going to a restart, and in the back, everyone's aggressive. And Ross has seen it, it was a kind of mixed up, jumbled up. Ross has seen in the middle. Got Chase over here. He did turn Elliot, but everyone was being aggressive. They were all jumbled up. This was not. This was all not Ross has seen's fault. Yeah. And, and Andy DeHaunt literally said that he turned him, which I'm hoping he goes back in the video and shows like even Boyer. Michael Walter, which, by the way, he did good up in the booth. And Mike Joy even said that they were all jumbled up. This was not Ross Chastain's fault. Yeah. I think I think Ross, I think Elliot's was nowhere needed. Elliot's was nowhere <laughs> needed. I'm hoping he goes back in the video and just realize he he was dumb for trying to do that to Ross. Because I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I get Hamlin, but Elliot's was not needed. El. And if you're if you're in Elliot's shoes, of course you're gonna think that oh he turned me and everything. So if if he's pissed well, off about that, I get it. But but I'm just but I know the crew chiefs have. I think crew chiefs has like my. I think they have like my droids and audio and all that stuff, and they could have even seen that. I get the spotter couldn't see that distance, but at least I know there's replays on the crew chiefs because know that they were all jumbled up and. Everyone was being aggressive. For Ross Chastain, that was not all his fault. He just was, it was unfortunate that he was the one that turned him, yeah. which made it worse on Ross. Yeah. I don't blame, I do not blame Ross for that one. I think Chase Elliott was being mad for no reason. On, I mean, I get he got turned, but he was mad at him for no reason because everyone was being aggressive. Mm-hmm. Which led to the infamous restart. Oh, yes. Um, so yeah, that that's that's where I come in on this whole deal with Elliot punting El- uh, Ross. Yeah, punted himself out of the way, uh, punting Ross out of the way, and then Hamlin door sla- almost door slamming him, and then holding him up for quite some time. But another thing I was really surprised about focusing up at the front, Michael McDowell held his own for a while. And I think he led more laps than he ever had, probably anywhere else. Personal, I think. He did. I think so. Because uh, let's let's see, it doesn't show how many laps he led, but he had himself a super solid performance. Uh, it does. Here we go. Uh, let me see if we can find. Here it is. Thirty. That <laughs> exact number, the exact same number of his car number. Oh, that's funny. That's he led funny. 30, he led 34 laps that race. That's 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 good. Really good. That's really good for Michael McDowell. 
But yeah, um, I mean, and, and I was gonna say like the th- and pretty much the racing itself, it, it mostly mostly was calm. You you still had you still had that good style of racing, and a lot of drivers thought that oh the bottom is gonna be the most preferred way to go because you know some drivers have that have competed there in the past, uh, like twenty some odd years ago. Some of those veterans, some of those guys think oh. The bottom's the way to go, but no, that's not the case. A lot of people were trying everywhere else, <laughs> everywhere. And it was bad that this is what I don't like about the new car. It's hard to pass on short on tracks like that, which I feel like it would have been a lot better if they were able to like do a bunch of passing. Like they do, they whatever spot on an intermediates, intermediates and stuff. But when it comes to short tracks and that's not a short track but the way it acts like it's like a huge short track it's it's a short track with shifting involved it's a mixture between it's kind of like a mixture between uh let's say new hampshire milwaukee and yeah that's about it new hampshire milwaukee in some sense and all that it was hard to pass and you gotta have to restart right which Do I even want to? Do I even want to say it, or do I want to let you say it? Because the restarts were wild. Uh, yeah, the re- yeah, the restarts were really wild, and especially the last one where oh, the, I I could I uh, like I didn't even have to be in a call with you to to say that that restart. You absolutely had to have loved that restart, man. That was a good. That was a good restart. I just didn't want him to leave that restart. And, and, you know, your best friend managed to grab the lead. He didn't look back from there. He won the race. Win number two on the season. Which, I'll say this. This win, much cleaner than Darlington. So much cleaner yeah, than Darlington. I can, even, I can even say that. So, I'll, I'll, I'll give Logano this one. Like he won this one pretty fair. Didn't didn't move anybody out of the way. He put he got ahead of Kyle Bush, I believe, slid up in front of him, and did not look back from there. Hey, I'd say that's that's a solid restart in my opinion. He said he said who won, so I'm not gonna say his name again. Uh y'all y'all know me enough that you know why I don't like saying it. Ironically, he led the same amount of laps as his car number. <laughs> that's funny. So did Ryan Blaney. Oh, that's funny. So the race of irony. Down, yeah, I know, right? So going down the list, we already said who won. I'm not saying his name again. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even saying his name at all. Uh, Kyle Bush, Kyle Bush got second. Kurt Bush got third. Really good for Toyota starting to get up there. Starting to get good. But Ryan Blaney got fourth. Could have won. Could have won that race. Eric Amarola, his one and only start at Gateway, is the top five. That's a really good way. He was actually competing for the lead with Michael McDowell. Yeah. So pretty good for him. Martrex Jr. rebounded on a 600 start to get get sixth place. Eric Jones, another solid finish for that team. He's seventh. Ross Chastain, after coming from all that happened to him, gets a top ten. Yeah. He, I was happy about that one. That I was really happy rebounded from that. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Bell got ninth. AJ Allmendinger has never turned a lap here. Never turned a single lap. Not even in practice of qualifying because he was in Portland. Got tenth. Which that's for for your first time at Gateway in all the years that you've been racing. Never seen the track. Never turned a lap on it. Could have had a chance to turn a lap on it, but again, Portland. Hey. Top 10 finish after all that. Mad respect to AJ Allmendinger. Really good. Uh, Austin Sendrick, the rookie, came home, came home 11th. He had a really good, he had a really good start in the beginning. Did really good. Kyle Larson got home 12th. Alex Bowman 13th. The Hendrick guys did not show up. Yeah, that was a, uh, that's that's a tough thing to bite for uh the Hendrick guys the only other one that i think was really st- making strides was kyle larson but he really didn't do a whole lot 
he, they did not do good at all. You read Justin it. Justin Haley. No, sorry, go ahead. I was going to, well, I, I'm pretty sure you're getting to it, so you, you keep going. Justin ha- Justin Haley got 14th there. Good top good top 15 from him, a previous winner. Austin Dillon got 15th. Tyler Reddick, 16th, after running up there a whole lot. And then, and then spinning out, but still gets a top 20. Not bad for Reddick. I wish he would have done a lot better. Yeah. My opinion. And how about this guy? First ever cup start. Filling in for Chris Busher, Zane Smith finished the same position as his car as the car number. Yeah, he get seventeen top twenty first start. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah, I was I gonna think. bring that up, man. Just like the uh, there's more irony to this. <laughs> car seventeen finishes in P seventeen, which and first time for your first cup start. It's not a bad deal. And he was barely in he barely was talked about. He was literally barely talked about. No. Nope. He was running in the back the whole time. No one really mentioned him until the very end. He yeah. got top twenty. Yeah. All quiet. Done really good on the first start. I think he may get an Xfinity ride next year, my opinion. Could. Uh, we'll just see from there. We mentioned Mike McDowell got eighteenth. William Byron nineteenth. Again, not the best for Hendricks. Brad Keselowski getting a 20th. Not bad for him. Chase Elliott, ninth, And not, I'm sorry, that's his number. 21st. Todd Gillen, 22nd. Daniel Suarez, another great run, but then gets screwed. Mm-hmm. Still feel bad for him. Suarez is not having good luck. He's good, but he's just not having good luck. And we mentioned bad luck. Chase Briscoe started growing up, started going up at the front. He was the pole setter, and now he finished back in twenty fourth. Yeah, Oof. I feel not bad. a good day. Oh yeah, Harrison Burton not all that much. He got twenty fifth after starting top ten, best qualifying position his rookie career, I think. Bubba Wallace. 26th, Ty Dillon, 27th, Josh Balicki, 28th, Cole Custer, who re- who got got wrecked. I'm not sure he wrecked out, but he uh, but he got wrecked late in there. He was running up in the front too, which kind of sucked. He was having a good race. Yeah. DJ McLeod, 30th, Parker Klingerman. I thought he would have done a lot better. He's 31st. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 32nd, Kevin Harvick, who wrecked out. The late of the run. I think he was the caution. He was the last caution. He he was the last caution. Screwed him out. Had a really good run. Another bad points deal for him. And Denny Denny Hamlin. Hamlin. We mentioned him. Yeah, and Denny Hamlin. We mentioned him. Cody Ware. No surprise. He's down there. And then Corey LaJoy. See, that's where he's always at. I think I made that joke first. Anyways, yeah, Corey LaJoy, though. I do feel bad for him. Two weeks in a row, man. Two weeks in a row. Spire Spire Motorsports was supposed to, like, evolve from last year. Last year was training, and now they're supposed to, like, do good. They were supposed to build up on that. Now they're not doing as well. I wonder if it's because they're just... Like, where, I mean, like last year, you know, where they were actually just kind of preparing. They weren't really focused on the championship. They're just going out and they're just running their own races. And I think that's what really benefited Corey LaJoy and all Spire Motorsports. They actually were doing really solid last year because they didn't really, because they, in their own right, they were doing solid. But, but really, though, it's just like, they come into this year, it's kind of like, they they kind of were falling through on that for a little while, but then we're getting to this point, they're like, not doing the greatest. I feel like the only team that's actually succeeding from this new deal is only Petty GMS. Yeah, they were running really good. They, I mean, especially only, Eric Jones. Yeah, 
The only team I see doing more success, not counting Ross Chastain with two wins, and I'd say Kurt Busch with one win, I'd say Petty GMS. Yeah. Petty GMS is the main guys benefiting from this from this maybe Stenhouse. Maybe Stenhouse. I don't know. I don't know about college racing. Yes, the 16's doing good, but not Justin so much. Haley in the 31. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin Haley's kind of just meh. I hate to say it, but it's just meh. But so yeah, Justin Haley with my sleeper pick. He's not doing all that well. I'm mad about that. I thought he would be doing a lot better since he's had that experience from college. But oh well. Uh. But yeah, going now to the cut points, and this is an interesting one. We still got we still got eleven winners, but this time now four two time winners with Ross Chastain leading them, Joey Logano now second, William Byron and then Denny Hamlin, and hmm. all the winners with Elliot Bush, Larson Bowman, Briscoe, Kurt Busch, and Cedric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now the now the now this is where it gets interesting. The cut line points this changed a lot. Uh, Ryan Blaine. The first three, no surprise, Blaney, Truex, and Bell are still fine. Yeah. Blaney's up by 102, Martrex Jr., uh, 90, 93, and Bell, 57. Here's where it gets interesting. Hmm. Amarola's back up there. Amarola's back up there with eight points. Tyler Reddick, two points, is up. Yeah. They're two above. Below the cut line. Kevin Harvick is now below the cut line by two. <sighs> He, 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 yeah. Harvick is below the cut line to make the playoffs. We're about halfway. I know we're about halfway, but that well, actually with the Raiders, the whole season we're halfway. But now he's two points below the cut line. This is where it gets interesting. Got Eric Jones, 26 below. below. Austin Dillon, 29 below. I think that's where it gets good if and if Daniel Suarez wants to be in this thing, he better get some good positions because he's literally 60 points below the cut line. He can do it. I know Suarez can do it. He's shown it before, but, you know, he just he needs good runs. He just needs to have those numbers. I mean, he just needs good runs to back up the numbers that he's always – well, other way around. He needs the numbers to back up the good runs that he's been having. I know he can do it. He's shown it before. He almost won Fontana for crying out loud at the beginning of the year. He almost did. Yeah, he and almost he's won. And he's run good races. Yeah, he so, just can't finish them. He's not. He's not closing the deal. And if he can't do it, then he's out. And look and listen to this. This ain't part of my list, but I'm just going to add these. I'll just go ahead and add add these guys. Michael McDowell is only 86 back. He's only twenty. He's only uh, like fourteen behind Suarez. Suarez, another bad race. Michael McDowell, a good race. He will be in the twentieth spot. Yeah. Think of Bubba Wallace, ninety-six back, only ten back from McDowell. Four back. No, no, five back from Wallace is Justin Haley with one hundred and one. Yeah. Then got Chris Busher, who's not even shown. Don't even don't even have a number. Is he? Oh yeah, because uh, Busher had drove the seventeen, so the seventeen is going to show up on next to Busher. But he but Busher's supposed to be back for Sonoma, so that yeah, should get but fixed. I'm, I'm just want, I'm just wondering if that'll hinder his. I'm hoping they give like a playoff waiver for Busher if he makes it through, because like Charlie, you don't you don't show him as any points. It shows him as zero. And if you look at the uh, cup standings, hmm. you don't show him like twenty fourth. It just shows him like below, That's right odd. there. Which I, I think, I really think, if it was showing up, then he would be one hundred and three. It would show one hundred and three, and then Stenhouse behind him is one hundred, is one hundred and seven. Yeah. No, that would be one hundred. Oh, oh, Bush would be one hundred and four. Pardon me, I messed up in that one. <laughs> you be one hundred and four, and then Stenhouse would be one hundred and three. Yeah. So those from 21st up between 
21st and 23rd. They're still heating up. It's still getting close. You may even, well, I don't know if you can add Ty Dillon. He's still like, uh, he's kind of, he's 16 behind. Maybe you can add him. Yeah. But it's still getting pretty good to try to get to that 20th spot. And if they get good runs, they might be able to be in compete competition to be up in the 17th, maybe get top 16. Maybe. I mean, it's, the possibilities are there. I mean, we've only got, what, we're past race 15. We're going to be a race 16 being in Sonoma. So after that race, there'll be 10 more to go. So this is going to be, yeah. this is going to be a wild. Yeah. It's going to be a and wild I, 11 more races. I feel like from looking at the points here, maybe I'd say, I don't know. I'm trying to think who would be below. Who would be down right now that's in a must win because the lowest guy that's 30th in points is brad kozlowski and he's only 300 307 points from from elliot who's still the points leader and then he's still 179 back from uh from reddick who is the uh above the cutoff yeah so i think Maybe from Harrison Burton down. He's one. He's one fifty six. Maybe Cole Custer, one thirty three. I think they're must wins. I don't think they can point their way in. I'm so iffy if Stenhouse can point his way from Stenhouse up can point their way in. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't know. I mean we're just gonna have to keep our eyes open these next eleven races. Something could happen. Something's got to give. Um. Yeah, I don't really know what else to really say, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Speaking of fun, we're going to wine country coming up here. Xfinity Series is off, so it's going to be trucks and the Cup Series there. So Now listen, now listen to this. The, play, the entry lists are not up yet. I have to ch I'm going to check to make sure. I don't think they're up on waiver wave around that yeah but but the Kyle Busch is making his final start in the truck series Woo! this season at Sonoma yeah this, this season and he has not won believe it or not he has not won in in the truck series this season yeah, he hasn't even won a single time, which I'm s s surprised by that. <laughs> I'm super surprised that he's not won a single truck race this year. And he's been in all all five five ones from like I'm trying to remember all five of them. It was Vegas, Coda, Charlotte. There's one. Where am I missing? There's one more. Gosh. Uh. Forget that last one. It always slips my mind. It's not Texas. It's not Texas. He wasn't a part of. No, he wasn't a part of Kansas. That was Corey Heim. Uh. I said Texas. No, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm saying that. I know he wasn't. I don't know. He. I don't think he even was a part of Texas either. I'm going back to check. I know Charlotte, Texas. No, Corey Heim did Texas, Kansas. Nope, 51. Uh, he was not in Kansas. It was a Darlington. I think that may have been Drew Dollar. Nope, that was Corey Heim. <laughs> and it was a Brist It was not Bristol Dirt. I know that for a fact. Yeah, you never see Kyle Busch race Bristol Dirt. <laughs> Unless if it's Cup Series. Oh, Martinsville. I forgot about Martinsville. <laughs> He was in Martinsville. I entirely forgot about Martinsville. The last in yeah, Martinsville. So he has gone. I'm going to go back through all the races he's done and see the positions he was in. Kyle Busch got second to his team, to his drive, to his teammate slash driver, 
uh, Chandler Smith at Vegas, his first race. And then you go a few weeks later, or actually two races later, to to Circuit of the Americas, where he got third. Where he finished third in that race. That was honestly the best way that he's ever lost a race at Coda. And then another third place at next week, the next track at Martinsville. Yeah. Now we go now we go through a bunch of other tracks. There there's there's a lot. I mean, I what well, Charlotte was next. I think he finished 7th in that race, didn't he? He did finish 7th. I, I see it right now. He finished 7th. Yeah. And that was his last race till now. It's funny that Kyle Busch is usually driving to win the 51. Corey Heim has more wins than Kyle Busch. In the 51. <laughs> which he's leading him by 2. That is still beyond bizarre of how that's happened. I swear, I think Kyle Busch needs to make a, a fourth entry. I, I think Kyle Busch either needs to retire from driving trucks. He needs to retire from driving trucks and give the 51 to Corey Heim or make a fourth entry because he better not kick out John Hardimacek or Chandler Smith just for Corey Heim to be in there. That's the same mistake they did with Christian Eckes. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, so, it was a big mistake with Eckes. It would be a huge mistake if he threw out uh, either Nemechek or Chandler Smith. Like, If Nemechek chooses to leave and try to go for an Xfinity ride or a Cup Series, then put Corey Heim there. Then, I would, then that's better. Then that's a way better... Then have do a part time with Drew Dollar, which he needs all the work he can get. Yeah. Or put Roger Carruth in there too. Or just have Roger Carruth be a spire car. Who knows? But don't kick out Eckes or not 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 Eckes, I'm sorry. Don't kick out Smith or Nemechek just to put Korheim in there. That's the same mistake you did with Eckes. Yeah. And yes, Eckes is not doing all that great, but he's still running to do some wins. He's actually up there competing for wins. Exactly. That you lost a good competitor when you kicked out Eckes. Yeah. So that's that's just something Kyle should not do. He should not make that same mistake he got. Yeah. But yeah, we're coming up to Sonoma. Wyatt, when it comes to the Cup Series. We don't know what to expect because this is the next gen That's car. The new car. Yep, at uh, at the at the configuration that we we were used to for so long before they put that uh, before they put that little chicane back into the into the into the frame and had that for a couple years. But now we're back to what we had previously with this track configuration. But on top of that. We're also we have also got the truck series back at Sonoma for the first time since 1998. Sonoma is going to be an interesting one for the truck series. Cup series is kind of predictable. We'll get we'll get some ideas. We'll get some guys. We can figure all that out real easily. But the truck series, though, yeah. Truck series is not like you mentioned. I've not been I've not been there for a long while, and not and I bet you there's not one driver on that entry list coming up that has not raced there at all. This will be everyone's probably everyone's first time. Maybe Matt Crafton filling in for well actually no. I'm actually wrong. Ben Rhodes uh, didn't Ben Rhodes race uh yeah. Sonoma race? Ben Rhodes raced Sonoma last ben year Rhodes I think. Only Ben Rhodes is the only guy who has experience with Sonoma. But I'm not sure how well that will turn out. Eh uh. Yeah, I don't know either. And then again, they could. Then again, I think Arca's ran Sonoma, so maybe they have. Maybe who run Arca may have had that advantage. Chances are, know. chances are, 
there's a g g big, ch probably a big chunk of the truck drivers and cup drivers collectively that are going to be racing in the West race. There's a big, not there's a big not, chance. Not to mention, there's going to be some cup guys probably in the truck races. Going to be in the truck race. Yeah, for example, Kyle Busch. Yeah, Kyle Busch, we know he's going to be there, and I think he's a, I think he's a real threat because he's won there twice in the Cup Series. Yeah, and it's in the, uh, in that configuration too. So I think Kyle Busch, if he's going to win a race in that fifty-one, he better do it at Sonoma. Yeah, because that is his last shot this season. Actually, I am wrong. I'm actually wrong. I forgot there's one person in the field who has. Well, actually, not since 50, not since that. I'm wrong. I'm wrong about the uh, truck full-on truck series race, but I forgot. There's another driver who's turn laps, and who actually got fourth one year in Sonoma, who could be a truck threat. Hmm. Matt DiBenedetto. That's right. We co we completely forgot about him. <laughs> Right about Matt DeBetto. I'm looking at his name right now, and I'm like, "Oh crap! I forgot. He has a he does have experience." Out of all of these, I think whoever's in the seven, because it's going to most likely be a Cup guy in the seven car, going to be driving. Maybe I think I have to go with a gut feeling. I think Elliot, probably Elliot or Larson, probably. But, <laughs> but then again, you never know. They could. There's there. Once the entry list comes out, there could be a few road course ringers in there. You never know. You never know. But all I could say this is, like, the main guys you might want to watch out for for this thing, I feel like it's Matt DiBenedetto. He has more runs at Sonoma than probably, besides Kyle Busch, anyone else on this list. And also, he got his best career finish of fourth. In 2019... Having a good season in that 95, I might add. Yeah. So. And then, I don't know about Sauter. I don't know about Crafton. Can't really say much about them. Johnny Sauter, I think, is another guy that has turned laps at Sonoma when he ran the Cup Series at the time. But I, but I don't know if he's in this race. It, maybe uh, I I would heavily doubt it, <laughs> but you can never rule out. It would out. not surprise me if Sauter's in this race, but I don't think Johnny's in the. I don't think Sauter's in this race. I I I, I just can't see him in this. Craft Crafton's a Crafton's if you want because he could have sub for a driver at Sonoma, but it's hard to tell sometimes. Right. But those are the only guys I could kind of see. Even be contention, no, no, not counting whoever's in the seven, right. which will probably, which will probably, when it pops up, you'll probably edit it. Who's in the seven? Might I, I might if I remember. But still, the big, but still the question of Sonoma. This is the same, same thing with every single series. It has the same thing. It's like, I forgot. It's the. Not confusion. I just lost the word. It's the unknown. It's always an unknown with this season. Yeah. And every single series, it's an unknown. That's the main, that's the top word in the NASCAR 2022 season. Unknown. This this year's been a mystery. <laughs> yeah, that. But it's still, man, like, it's, it's, I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I do love it, too. It's pretty good. But alrighty, let's go ahead and jump into our predictions. So we're going to use the previous race's entry list uh, because at least 90% of, of the entry lists for trucks and cup are going to be correct. We don't know about the rest. Uh, but anyways, so the driver, we give you the driver who we think is going to win. That's pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. Driver to stay away from is the driver that hasn't been doing well the last couple weeks or we're just coming up to a track to where they just suck at. Dark Horse is the driver... Which basically is the exact opposite. They're coming up to a track that they absolutely kick ass at. Or they've been doing well the last couple of weeks. So I really don't know what else to say. Except Sonoma, man. It's uh, it's going to be fun. Wyatt Walker, you are up first. 
So I'm think so we're starting with trucks, and I'm thinking long and hard on who I think might do good besides Kyle Busch, because we keep saying Kyle Busch will win this race, this race, this race, but he has not won yet. So it is actually making me think. Should I do I even men, do I even mention like even putting him on here because he's usually a threat to win, but he, we usually don't pick him because we always think he's gonna win. Right. But. But in this case, I'm probably not going, I'm not going to. Because I think this is some, some crazy prediction that might work. Dark Horse, Matt DiBenedetto. Ooh. I've mentioned it before. Matt DiBenedetto has cup, has like, what, six years of cup experience? Yeah. Six seasons. Six years of cup, six seasons of cup experience. He's got, his best finish is fourth. In 2019, when he drove for a smaller team, keep in mind, a smaller team who did had a best, at that point, the best season, coming with like, what, four, four top five finishes? Yeah. That same year? When he first started out? So, Matt the Bad Dedo is probably one of my best, is probably the best Dark Horse, if there's not one in the seven card, to do this. Yeah. The dark, not dark horse, the driver stay away from. It's a tough one. I'm giving this to a guy who qualifies good, but cannot finish the best. Hmm. Colby Howard. Man. He's always qualifying good, but if you look back, he is not really finished that really good. I think he got finished good at Coda. I'm gonna actually look back at that and see. But judging by the last few races, I don't know how I feel about Colby Howard. He was starting to surprise me. I thought he was gonna get get that win for them, but it's just not not showing up. Right. But I will tell you a guy who is showing up is my driver to win, who won the last, the only road course race we went to this year, and also has the most wins in the truck series right now, Zane Smith. I think Zane Smith will get another win. That's a good one. And I'm not still trying to look back on here. I don't really see his name at all. <laughs> oh no, I see him. Yeah, he finished 24. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm stick, I'm sticking with it. Yeah, stick with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, Zane. Z no, yeah, Zane Smith's my winner. Uh, Colby Howard is definitely my stay away. I don't have much faith in him at all. The Cup Series. This is probably interesting because we know the drivers who's good here. A bunch of drivers won here. A bunch of drivers finished really good here. The next gen is going to be going to be the uh, equalizer. Kind of figure out, try to match the field. But if they get some experience about how they race before. I'm just saying this now because this may play into it. The, the rookies of 2020 and 2019 have a disadvantage. Hmm. The rookies of 2020 and 2019, even 2021, has a dis disadvantage. Because they, their only Sonoma race was at the the carousel. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can think of those drivers' names on top of my head. Custer. Cust. Yeah. Well, I was going to mention like the big three, but I was trying to think the nineteen rookies. Oh. I know Hem Hemrick was one. I just can't remember the other one. Gosh. Um. I know uh, what's his name was in the thirty-six, but he's not in the race. No, what's oh man? Oh, John Hurt. John Hurt. Twenty twenty. Uh, 
forgot the working class of 2019. <laughs> Look at nothing. Last I know with Hammering, there was one other guy. I cannot remember who. That's Hall of Fame. That's not rookie. Ryan Priest. Ryan. Wait, Ryan, because I don't, because I don't believe Ryan Priest is gonna be. A, I don't know if he's. I gonna think be it was. Him. Yeah, it was Ryan Priest. Yeah, because it shows here: yeah, Daniel Hemrick, Ryan Priest, Matt Tift, and That's Cody it. Ware. Well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cody. He, he's disadvantaged. Yeah, he has a disadvantage. No, no, no other way. Yeah, he's and severely. I, I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think Priest is even running this race. If he runs this race, then he still has a disadvantage. Yeah, regardless. So, <coughs> literally, drivers with disadvantage. I may put one of them as a stay away, but just like keeping these names out here. Uh, Ryan Priest, if he races to 15. Uh, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, Cole Custer, uh, Chase Briscoe. Six drivers actually have a disadvantage. Yeah. Because they're back to the old figure, we're back to the old figuration. But let's go to the drivers who might have a disadvantage and might have an advantage to this race. So, Dark Horse. I think I'm going to go with a guy who's won here twice. Mm. And I'm going with Mark Trex Jr. He needs a good run, and he knows and he knows Sonoma really well. I think he's. I think he's a good dark horse. I think that's a good pick. That's a good pick. My driver to stay away from. I hate to say it, but you gotta. You gotta place the facts. He's ran good. He's ran out front, but stuff always happened to him. I'm going to go Tyler Reddick. He's looking right at his name. Tyler Reddick is not having a good season he thought he was in the beginning. And with the new with and he's only raced the only race the new config new. only raced the new configure the carousel. Yeah, he's and that was last year. Though, yeah. And that was last year. That's when yeah. That was last year. And I don't even remember where he finished, nor do I and it don't even matter because there's a difference. So, I think Tyler Reddick is my driver's favorite. Mm. My driver to win, it just it comes down to a, the nitty gritty of four drivers. Mm. Maybe three, depends. The four drivers I mentioned, you may, you may steal one of them from me, but I think drivers who, I think Coda. I go back to Coda. Think, uh, think, think back to Coda, but uh, one guy didn't perform as I thought he would, but he won, one name, he won last year, Larson's still a name up there, I think the road course ringers of Elliott and Allmendinger earned the names, Yeah. Yep. but Raw Chastain is still on the tip of my tongue every single week, I can't count him out, but this week, this week, I might have to. As much as I don't want to say it's him, he's the only name I can think of that could do good. I'm going to go Chase Elliott. I, Chase Elliott is my winner. That's not a bad deal. I mean, he could do it. He could do it. I, and he ran the last few years. He definitely got, like, top three. And I don't think he's, he, yeah, he's never really wanted Sonoma, so. He's never won Sonoma. That's, that's one of the only few road courses that he's not won, won at yet. This, this is actually the only road course he's not won at. If you think about all the road courses we've had, this is the only one. Yeah. Because he's won Coda. He actually won Daytona, the Daytona road course when it was still, actually, no, that's a lie. He has not won any road course. Yeah. He's, that's the only other one. Sonoma and the Indy Rovo are the only two road courses he has not won. And he even won the inaugural race at Road America and Coda. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
he only he got two road courses to take off his list, and he may take Sonoma this week. Well, that's um, gonna be pretty interesting. But all right, it's my turn. So here we go. So Sonoma, like I said, first time that they're back there since 1998. A vast majority of the drivers' first times, with the exception of Matt Benedetto. That's when it comes to the full-time roster. Um, but I'm going to say for my driver to win, this is going to be really tough. This is going to be severely, severely, very difficult. But... I think that's the only name I'm going to have to say here because I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. Zane Smith, man, he's bad fast. He's been bad fast all season. One and only road course that the Truck Series has been to currently, Coda. He got that one in the bag, made it front two years in a row for Front Row Motorsports. So this guy could pull it off. Zane Smith could do it. Drivers stay away from him on the other hand. I man, that's this is also tough. This is also severely, severely, severely every week, tough. every week, severely tough. Mm -hmm. Like it really is. I never knew that there was a driver named Justin S. Carroll, a part of the truck race at Gateway last week. I never knew that. Never saw him a day in my life. Anyways, um, he was driving the ninety. And the the truck owner's not even listed, but that's not that's not it. Um, driver to stay away from. I hate to put him in, under this category because he ran really well uh, last Saturday. Chase Purdy. He's gonna be my guy to stay away from. He was another. He was another guy. I was I have my eye on. Dark Horse, gotta agree with you on this one, Matt DiBenedetto. Six seasons worth of cup experience on the, on Sonoma. First, what was it, first three seasons? Really four if you count 2015. Uh, on the actual, on the actual configuration without the carousel. So, who knows, he could, he could make some noise. So now Cup. Cup is a whole different story. Driver to win. See, I really don't know. But the best thing, the best driver I can really pull out of the hat here is AJ Almendinger. Because the thing is, like. It's a pretty high chance he's going to be racing at Sonoma. Oh, I know it's a high chance. I just have to double check to make sure. But, yeah. You, it, should Almendinger compete at Sonoma? Never count him out. You never. Don't. You never not count him. Yep. Don't, yep. Don't count him out because he's in the race. Yeah. You can. You, I figured he would. I just had to double check. There's no way you can't count him out of the conversation when it comes to him winning like he's he he most likely may have this in the bag you never know uh driver to stay away from on the other hand on the other hand if i can actually talk properly um driver to stay away from i think i might have to say gosh Goodness gracious, I, I'm i going to have to say Kevin Harvick's my guy to stay away from. I, I, I really don't know about Harvick, man. I just don't. That's it. I just don't know about Harvick. Harvick's iffy. Now, Dark Horse, you might think this is iffy. Uh, but I think, I think he could have a legitimate shot of running well. I don't think he'll win, but I think he'll run well. Austin Sendrix, my dark horse. You know what? I forgot about him. That's actually not bad because he's also he hasn't really been showing it lately. But he's all, but he's the rope. He is the road course ringer. I actually forgot about. Him. I forgot about him. I like that one. 
this. And I'd like to point out something about Harvick real quick. And I do agree with you. Even though he is the 2017 winner, he's been falling off since then. So I like I like that stay away pick as well. Yeah. Well, alrighty, Wyatt. We've already made our predictions. We've gotten everything that we needed to talk about from the Gateway slash Portland weekend done. Any final thoughts before we get the Sonoma weekend underway? It start Fox Sports start out with Tony Stewart being the third person. Fox Sports ended with Tony Stewart being the last last person. We'll get we had a good run this year, Fox. We have fun. Now next now I can't wait. For that, and then NBC will be coming up next. We'll be back with Dale Jr. in the booth. Maybe we'll be lucky and get and have another stuff, something like that. With NBC, maybe. Oh man, we, but, we're probably going to see a lot from NBC this year. A lot of but, a lot of stuff from them. But let's but let's have this send off with Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, and Tony Stewart. Let's do one. Let's do one last hurrah to those three. And. And then send them off on their own ways. Mike Joy can go back to uh, racing whatever kind of cars he wants to. Um, Clint Boyer can just drink a lot of beer. Now that's going to say uh, help his son. And, and drink beer. Cash, is it cash? Cash Boyer. Yeah. yeah. Not and only. Then Tony, and then, then Tony can go back to running both his NR team and Cup team, which is. The cup team still needs more work. I didn't know Tony Stewart owned an NR 2003 team. Not 2003. <laughs> not NR. NR. You meant NHRA. NH, 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 NHRA. That's what I meant to say. But you said NR. And that, NHRA. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. NHRA. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever the drag strip team's called. We don't focus on them. He, they, he just has a team there. That's his other team, so we can go back to focusing about Cup and that team. Whatever. Let's let's. End of story. <laughs> yeah. But alrighty, so that's pretty much gonna do it for this episode. Want to thank you guys a lot for watching or listening on Spotify. If you like this, be sure to give it a like, and if you haven't considered subscribing yet, recommend you do so to keep up with some fine content coming out in the near future. That about does it for me. On behalf of Mr. White Walker over here, I'm Elijah Leonard signing out, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.